Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We've got uh, Senator Ali Yusavi Abdullahi, is the Chairman, Senate Committee on Media and Public Affairs. He joins us this morning. Good morning and thank you for coming on today. Uh, we have to start with the uh, this security matter, the challenge that we've got, the threats given. What, what's the uh, perhaps impression? Okay, let's get your impression of this particular matter at the moment. Yeah, thank you very much, Chamberlain. Good morning, Nigerians, and thank you for having me. Uh, first, let me say that uh, the situation you refer to, which I can see on the screen you tagged the Arewa ultimatum, uh, is most unfortunate. And I think we have to understand that uh, we are in a constitutional democracy, and everything must be done within the confines of the rule of law. Now, Perhaps let me state here that, yes, democracy has given everybody the freedom of speech, the freedom of association, and the freedom to do certain things. But it also comes with some responsibility. And I think it is from this perspective that we must begin to look at these issues. First, it is a condemnable act. And I think I had the governor of uh, Borno State saying none of them is a councillor. Now, what this also means is that we have to begin to ask, within the context of democracy, when you are speaking, do you have three things on you? Do you have the mandate of the people? Do you have the legality? And do you have the legitimacy? And I think if you look at these three things, legitimacy, legality, and mandate, they are the three things that somebody should have in coming to speak on very weighty issues. Otherwise, it is something that people must be very careful in what they say. And I think uh, you come to agree with me that uh, at this critical stage in our nation's history, that is not what we need. And uh, I, I want to submit that those people who spoke in Kaduna we are speaking for themselves. I'm a northerner, and I don't think my constituents have even spoken on that issue. We are very accommodating, and we have all manners of Nigerians living in the various uh, domains that we represent. So I think we need to, you know, look at these issues very dispassionately and uh, people who think they can take on, you know, certain privileges and there are no responsibility. I think it's time for us to begin to say for every privilege there is, there is some responsibility and you must be responsible for your actions. So what then would you say must be done to stop this kind of behavior that we are seeing today? Yeah. I, I, I didn't hear you come again. What must we do as a people to stop this kind of behavior? Well, I, I think uh, the issues are a little bit rather complex because um, there are definitely some, you know, nuances out there. And I think it is from these nuances that some people are trying to take advantage. And uh, what this means is that we must also, as elected representatives and as appointed representatives, you know, of people playing various responsibilities and functions. We must really come alive to our responsibilities in a manner that leaves nobody in doubt as to how we want to safeguard this country. And I think in doing this, we must lay credence to the Constitution, which has provided guarantee for everybody, which has provided the freedom for everybody to associate, to live anywhere he chooses. And that, you know, right must not be taken by anybody. You know, speaking about uh, which, I mean, you, you're a lawmaker. Uh, there are those who say that the law has been a little slow because many question, why is it that how many hours after uh, Kaduna State Governor, different governors, the IG of police have spoken, they still haven't arrested or seen anyone arrested yet? Uh, sorry, I, I can't hear you. I was saying that um, as a lawmaker yourself, there are those who say that the law seems to be on the back foot because several hours after the Kaduna State Governor, Berno State Governor, the IGP have all spoken, no one has seen to be arrested yet. Well, I, I think this is something that must be placed on the doorstep of our security agencies. And uh, I think uh, it's very important that they take some of these issues very seriously and so that at the end of the day, we don't begin to encourage lawlessness. Uh, you are right in what you have said, 
but the, 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 the issue to be noted here is that many people have spoken to the fact that those boys are on their own. Uh, they are not speaking for, 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 for Ariwa youth in general. And I think uh, these are not issues that we want to see being you know, uh, put forward. Uh, if anything, as youth, they should begin to think about how they can make themselves as useful citizens and useful members of their community. And this is where the responsibility comes in. And I think we must take some of these things very seriously. And the security agencies are listening, and I think they need to do what needs to be done. Do you believe that these group of uh, people who spoke and gave this ultimatum have been sponsored? Well, my question is, do you believe that uh, those who made that announcement of the ultimatum are being sponsored? Well, I cannot just make that conclusion because I don't have any facts before me. But the point is simply that whatever it is, that is what the security agencies ought to go in to find out and to unravel so that they can nip it in the bud. So, Senator, two years on in the National Assembly, uh, there are those members of the public who are still skeptical. That they still have, you haven't won them over yet. They think that the National Assembly has not performed to the extent that they will thumb you up. All right. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, if, if I get you right, you are trying to, you know, ask for my reaction with respect to some skepticism about our performance. Yes. Is, is that the question? Yes, it is. All right. Uh, well, first and foremost, let me say that uh, this is not unusual. Uh, we are in a constitutional democracy, and uh, of course, like I've said earlier in my first reaction, Nigerians are enjoying freedom, the freedom of speech, freedom of expression. And uh, of course, if anybody sees somebody is not performing, he's entitled to that opinion. But I think from this perspective as legislators, particularly as the Eighth Senate, let me say that we came on board and met several challenges. And uh, within that context, we, are, we told ourselves, first, we need to make sure that we respect the tenets of democracy. And so we have to affirm our independence by freely and rightly choosing our leaders. And within that context, our leadership has enjoyed a very, very high confidence level. And on that note, the vision set by our leadership under distinguished Senator Bukola Awakar Saraki is very clear and unambiguous. Uh, we had a, we, 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 we unveiled to Nigerians our legislative agenda where we made it very clear that we intend to even reform the way the legislature work. We also made it very clear that we want to do everything to promote good governance. We made it clear that we're going to support economic diversification and economic growth. We made it clear in that bill that we're going to support various governance reform, especially in the public service and public corporations. And we also said we're going to support government's drive to fight corruption. And at the same time, we're also going to deepen our democratic process by looking at electoral reform and some constitutional amendments. Now, I want to say that on all of these very you know, various objectives I have set out. These two years has been very remarkable in the sense that we have achieved very many aspects of this. Uh, I must also say that it is work in progress. We still have, by the special grace of God, two years more to go. And I'm convinced that based on the trajectory we have already set for ourselves, we are surely on the right track and on the right path. Now, in terms of assessing ourselves, as legislators, we represent the people. And in doing our functions or carrying out our duty, we have three key areas, lawmaking, representation, and oversight. And in all of these, the overall interest of Nigerians is paramount. And I think that is what exactly we have been doing as you know, the 8th Senate. 
and indeed the Eighth National Assembly. Now let me break it down. First, if you look at the area of reforming how we do our work, for the very first time we even came up with what we call the legislative agenda, which seeks to provide a guide to how we carry out our job. And we've been able to succeed because we framed everything we are doing within that context. And whether motions, whether bills, or oversight functions, whatever we do, we are guided by what we have said in that legislative agenda so that we don't deviate and we are focused. Now, on this note, let me say that one of the major areas where we tend to get you know, so many noise on is the aspect of budgeting. And I want to say that for the very first time, the National Assembly made a promise, and of course we have made our National Assembly budget open. And uh, the second aspect is we said we are going to reform the way we do the appropriation. And for the very first time, unlike 2016, where of course there was some little noise, we have tried as much as possible to do things in a manner that we encourage very robust engagement with various stakeholders.